Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to recreate elegant themes, layout pack reviews with fan art hover effects in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we get started, we are going to go through the list of things that we need to have in place in order for us to create this tutorial. So first of all, you want to, of course, have Divi installed. Next, we're going to be building this from scratch. So we, we're going to be creating a brand new page. And then finally, we're going to need three images that can be used as the mock images. And the sizes should be around 250 by 375 pixels. So I'm gonna come over here to dashboard and create a brand new page. So I'm gonna click here on add new, and then I'm gonna give this page a name and click on use Divi Builder. Next, you wanna come over here to build from scratch. And then for this example, we're gonna build three columns. So I'm gonna select that. Now I'm gonna go into my row settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to set my gutter width. So I'm gonna come over here to design, sizing, and then you want to activate use custom gutter width. Now the gutter width is just the space between the columns. So we want to reduce this a little bit. So we're gonna drag this down to about two. And then we're also going to set our width to 90%. Next for the maximum width, uh, 1080 is a bit too small. So let's set this to about 1120. So what we're going to do next is to add some padding to the bottom of our columns. So I'm just gonna click here on content and we're gonna start here with column one. So I'm gonna click on this little gear icon, design, spacing, and we're going to add a padding of 20% to the bottom. And then we're gonna come back over here and do the same to the second column. Click on design, spacing, 20%. Come back over here, go to the third column, design, spacing and 20%. So now we've added 20% to the bottom of all these columns. Now let's start adding our images. So I'm gonna save here, save this one more time, and then we're gonna click this plus button to add our modules. So I'm gonna search for my image module just by typing the first few letters, and then I'm gonna select image. Okay, so let's start by adding all our images now. So I'm gonna click here, and go to my library and look for the image that I need to add for my design. So I'm gonna go ahead with this one here and notice we have 250 by 375 pixels. This is the optimal size. And then I'm gonna click on upload an image. Now we need to update the design settings. So I'm gonna come over here to click on design. First of all, let's start with alignment. We're gonna center this and then we're gonna set our width. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing and our width here by default is set to uh, auto, so we're gonna set this to 220. And then we're gonna come over here to the advanced tab, click on visibility, and on the overflow, in fact, we need the vertical overflow, we're gonna set this to hidden. And then over here on the Z index, we're gonna set this to four. Now we, over, we also have some CSS code that we're going to be adding. Now, since we are needing to target the image container and not the image itself, uh, it's best to add this as CSS code. So I'm gonna come over here, click on custom CSS. And in the main element, this is where I'm gonna paste my CSS code and notice what has happened here. Now, if you wanna use the exact same CSS code as I'm using throughout this tutorial or the exact same values, I'm going to link uh, uh, to the post which, uh, which has all these settings in the show notes below. So now that we've added this, I'm gonna save it and then we're gonna add the second image. So I'm gonna click on this plus button search for my image module, select it, and it's now time to add my second image. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, upload an image. Now I'm gonna come over here to design sizing and set my width to 180. And then like we did before, we're gonna come to the advanced tab, visibility, and on my vertical overflow, I'm gonna uh, set it to hidden. And I'm also going to add some CSS code to this. So I'm gonna come over here to custom CSS and on the main element, I'm gonna add my CSS code. Now let's add the third image. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Now with, in this example, I'm just gonna come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe mode. And this is the image that I need to duplicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna go back to my front view. Now you may have noticed that I've just gone in and did it in the, um, wireframe mode, and that is because it's quite difficult here to target the image that I need to, to target it this way. Okay, so now that I have image one, image two, and image three, I'm, I'm going to need to go in and make some changes to it. So I'm gonna go back over here, 
click this gear icon here so I can go into my settings. So I'm going to click here on advanced custom CSS. Now this image here needs to be on the right. So here you can see it says left. So I'm going to come in here and just amend that to right. And let's see what is happening here by switching over. And you can see here we've added the image here to the right. Now, the other thing that we need to do is, as you can see, we duplicated this image. So we need to go in and add a totally different image. So I'm going to come over here, click on image, and I'm going to choose a totally different image. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one here, upload an image. And now you can see we have a different image. All right. So with that, so far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now that we've added all our images, it's time now to go in and add our hover effect. So we're going to come over here to our row settings, click on advanced. And the first thing we need to do is to add a class and our CSS class here is going to be fan out images. And then what we need to do next for this to work is adding some CSS code to the actual page. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I am going to come over here to this gear icon. So this takes me to the page settings. So now I can go into the advanced tab, custom CSS and paste my CSS in here. Now by adding my CSS in, in this area here, this CSS code only affects this page that I'm working on. So you'll notice that uh, all the animations and everything that happens is only going to happen on this page. So now I can publish this and save this. So let's take a look at what this uh, effect looks like. So I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. And you can see here that uh, when I put my mouse over the images, this effect is now working. Excellent. So what we need, what we can also do now is we can actually go in and make further adjustments. So you can go in and play around with the settings. So let me go back over here to my expand settings and click on the page settings, advanced custom CSS. So here are the values that you can go in and play around with. So let's say, for example, you want to adjust the, uh, the transform. You can always come to this and change your, let's say the rotating degrees. So let's say you want this to rotate 10 degrees. You can just come over here, change this to 10 degrees, take a quick preview and see um, how much that angle is. And if you're happy with it, you can just keep adjusting until you are finally happy with how, with how it looks. And over here as well, uh, we can come over here and customize the, uh, the rotation angles. So let's say you want to add some links to these images. Again, I'm going to come over here to my wireframe mode. And then I'm going to come on the first image here, click on module settings, come over here to link. And this is where you'd add your link URL. So in this case, I'm just going to add a blank one. But in your case, you can actually link this image to whatever page on your website or even to an external website. Then once you're done with that, you can click, just click on save and then you can go ahead and do this to the second one as well. Add your link in here and also do it to the last one. But of course, if you don't want to link this to, uh, to anything, you can just leave it as it is. So let's say you want to add further images to these two columns. All you have to do is to copy these modules and paste them. So what you want to do is to just copy these modules over to these columns one by one and then just dragging it over like that. All right. So once you've copied all the images to the right columns, you can just come over here and do a quick preview. And as we can see here, everything seems to be in place. And then all you have to do is to go into each and every one of these columns and change the images. So let me show you quickly how to do that. So I'm going to come back over here to my wireframe mode, and then I'm just going to do this middle column here. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, switch over here to, in fact, I can just um, go into my image and choose the images that I need. So I'm going to save that, upload, go on to the next one. So once you've done adding all of them, you're going to have different images here showing in this column. And if you also want to add more images for your previews, all you have to do is to come over here on the rows and just duplicate the row. And now you have two rows. So this is where you can go in and also change these images. But uh, one key thing that you need to uh, bear in mind here is to make sure that 
all the images that you're adding are all the same size to have a consistent design. So once you're done adding all your images, this is how the final design should look like. So here, as you can see, the animation is working and we have different image previews. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.